All right, we're starting to wrap up this section now, this first round about entering and cleaning data. And we're gonna wrap up with a topic that I think is just wonderful. It's called piping. We've talked a little bit before about how you can compose function calls. You can have one function call inside another one and an R expression. And R will kind of work from the inside out to evaluate the innermost one and then work out through the nesting. There is a special function though that lets you really clean this out because it gets really hard in that case to look back through your calls and try to figure out which one's the innermost and where the parentheses match. This function is a special function called the pipe function, and it's from a package called Magreeter. So you'll want to make sure you install Magreeter if you don't have it already. Here is the spelling right here. And then we'll use this to do this composition. So let's take a look really quickly. We had an example before, and I'll open a new R script for this, where we did a print call, and then we did it with paste inside, where we did something like hello world. And if we want to, we can set that formal argument as well. So when we run this, what will happen for the whole thing is it will print out hello world. If we do it piece by piece, we can look and see that the first part is a function called a paste. So that just puts those two pieces together. And then it's putting that value in the print. So the way that we can do this with piping is we can break it apart so we can see the order of how it's evaluating. We can start with doing our paste in this case, check that that's doing what we want. And then if that's the output that we want to put in as the first argument in the next function that we call, we can put this funny looking little pipe symbol and then we can go straight into the next function. So if you run that, that's going through this call on lines three and four is doing exactly the same thing as lines one. It's just that this pipe symbol is letting us break it apart. Here's another example. This is getting closer to what we've been doing. So we might want to subset a data frame by both selecting a few columns and also slicing out a few rows. So let's take a look. If you've been following along with the lectures, We've read in that data show, daily show data set, and then we've done some manipulations to it. If you still have your R session open, you probably already have daily show in a pretty similar format to what I'm working with. If not, you might want to make sure that you go back into your code and just rerun those calls so you have the same, the same kind of thing. So we're going to be using, in this case, the Magreeter package. So again, you'll want to load that Magreeter. I think I've got that right. Perfect. Okay. And now we can go down, let's highlight and make sure we have this data frame set up. So we might want to first select out a couple of columns. So in this case, we'll use daily show and let's pick out maybe the second and the fifth columns. So let's check that, that looks like what we want. And then we wanna slice out just maybe the first five rows of that. So we'll do slice. This is what the data equals, and then we'll do one through five, so first five rows. So if we run that, we can see that we're getting that nice subset that we want of just five rows and just two of the columns. But it's already, just with these two nested calls, a little bit hard to see where everything's matching up. So instead, we can use this pipe idea. So let's start out by pulling the first function call. We can check again to make sure that's doing what we want it to do. Good. All right. And now we can go through and we can pipe directly into slice. Now, when you pipe, it's going to put it in the position of that first call and you don't need to put in the formal argument anymore. We just need to put in anything that's left over. So this is the part here that's left over after we put in all of this, which is what we're specifying for the formal argument and its value for the first in terms of the position in that function call, the first thing that we specify. Uh, through a, a parameter. So I'll put in slice here. In this case, I just want to do one through five. So you can see here that's run and that's done the same thing, but now we can read down. We can see that first we're selecting and then we're slicing and it's much easier to see where things pair up. We can do even one more step. We can actually take this data frame out and we can put that at the very beginning. Oh, and pipe that in. So let me put in daily show here. 
We'll pipe that into the select. And now that we're piping it in, we take out where we specified that at the beginning. So again, this pipe takes whatever we just had and puts it in the spot for the first argument call. So now when we run that, that's doing the same thing. And look at how much this has cleaned it up. We can see now we are taking the Daily Show data frame. We're selecting out two of the columns, the ones in positions two and five. And then we're slicing down just to the first five rows. So I put in, we just looked through this, but I put this in the notes as well in case you want to take some notes on it. But this is just showing how we do that same process. And I think in this case, I picked a different set of columns to select and of rows to slice. But the same idea is working here. So a little bit about this name. I think this is one of the most lovely names of any of the R packages that I work with. So we use, again, this really funny kind of pipe symbol. But this idea goes back a long time. In Unix, you could pipe, and I can type it over here. You could use the pipe symbol, which just looks like an up and down line right there. We can't use that in R, though, because if you remember from one of the earlier videos this week, in R, that's a logical operator. That lets us do the OR operation. So we didn't have that as something free to use anymore. So the people who developed Magreeter decided to use this kind of funnier uh, symbol for this infix operator. Again, this is one of those special operators, those special functions that goes in between its two, its two parameters rather than being something where you have those parentheses and you have the values inside. So they use this funny symbol that was not taken already. But of course, that isn't a pipe in the traditional way we look at it in terms of the, the symbol. And so they said, this is not a pipe in French. And that, of course, is referencing back to an artist from the Surrealist period um, who did this painting and then said underneath that this is not a pipe. Um, and his name was Magritte, so this function is named Magritte in, in, in honor of, of that idea and that painting. So I want to show, this is so clever how this works, because it works perfectly in line with how a lot of the tidyverse functions are set up. So part of the magic, I talk a lot about tidyverse in this, but it really is an incredible, incredible thing that's come out since I started programming in R. And I think that it makes programming so much more pleasant when you're working in R. It's a wonderful invention. But its whole idea is that it works around this idea that we're going to keep our data in the same object type. We're going to keep it in a data frame pretty much throughout the whole process. And that way, we can have these functions that have the same type of input and give the same type of output. And if you have something that takes the same input and gives the same output, then you can put those pieces together in just about any order that you want. So you can take small pieces, small sharp, ob uh, small sharp tools, and put them together in the order that you want to do some very powerful combinations. It's the same kind of idea that makes something like Lego so powerful, that you can just put them together in any combination you want, because they all take the same input and give the same output. So if we look at some of these functions we've been looking at, like rename and, and select and slice, arrange, filter, mutate, really all of the ones that we've been looking at in the second part of the videos for this chapter, take a look at what the first argument and ask for is for each of these. In each case, it is always a data frame. So the first one for rename, we're putting in that data as a data frame. Same for select, same for slice, same for arrange, and so on. This will make piping very easy because no matter what order we call these different functions, they're asking for the same type of object. And then all of these also output a data frame object. So they're taking the same thing in and giving the same thing out in terms of the class of object that they're using and passing around. So we've been looking so far at this idea that every time we do a change, we're reassigning the object name in the code. And you can see there's this case where we've got the same object name over here on the left in all of these arrows. What we'll be able to do with the piping is clean this up a good bit so we don't have this whole section over here on the left. Again, piping lets us do that by kind of piping what we created in the last step before we get into the next step. The idea really is like pipes. We're going to take a function call. And normally, we would take the output of that and reassign that to a, to a new object name or, or, or overwrite the original object name. 
And then we run another function where we're taking that output object and putting it in as the first argument. And then we get something out of that and we do that same process. With piping, we're taking out a lot of those extra pieces ju by just directly piping in into the new functions as we go along and then getting our ultimate output. So I have a slide here where we're doing this, but let me actually show you that in our studio. So we've got our script here where we've been working with this and I can take off this last little piece where we did the example. All right, so we have this script where we went through all of the steps and we were really trying to clean things up. Oh, I'll take this out too, because that was the example from where we were showing it without reassigning it. So first we're reading in the data, then we're renaming some of the columns, then we're selecting certain columns, uh, specifically selecting off the year one, arranging the rows in a new order, mutating to change that job column to only have lowercase, and then adding on a new column where we've got the job in uppercase. Again, we've got all of these left-facing arrows over here, and we're repeating daily show over and over and over again. We're taking that same object and just reassigning it over and over. So we're gonna use the piping to fix this. So let's go up here, and the first thing we can do so we can take all of that out, add our pipe symbol, and once we have the pipe, we take out the first argument where we were saying what to use first. Because what happens is this pipe will take the output of this and it'll send it in as the first object here. All right, let me clean up some of the indentation here. Now we'll do the same thing here. So now we have select. The first thing that we were putting in was the output of the stuff that we did before. So this is what we'll be replacing by piping in the output here. So let's delete this, put a pipe symbol, and now we can delete this first part and just put in the later part. All right, same thing here. And the same thing here. And then we'll wrap it up with this one. So again, you can see how this process now has given us the chance to really look down at what's happening and focus on the actions that are happening at each step. So we are reading in the data, and then we're renaming some of the columns. Then we're selecting to remove a certain column by using the negative sign, arranging the rows, and then doing mutations to change one column in place and then to add on another new column. We can run this whole thing, and then we can see down here that if we look at daily show, it's what our original output was um, all the way through to the end with that column added. So a few tips as you're working on this. This takes a little bit to grasp, but it's so wonderful once you do. I really think it's worth the effort. So a few of these. First of all, this can give a big block of code that's a little hard to navigate as you're trying to figure out what each piece does. But with our studio and the highlighting and, and, and running things, it turns out that there are some easy ways we can work with it. So if you have a piece of code like this where it's a long pipeline, whether you wrote it or somebody's sharing it with you, and you're trying to figure out what each piece does, this is what I advise that you do. If you highlight part of it up until the closing parentheses, but right before that pipe symbol, you can run it either pressing run up here or doing control return. And then down here in the console, it will show you what's happened just into that point. So we can see that at this point, it has read in the data, but we still got those messy column names. Next, we can step through to the next piece and let's see what happens after we do the next call. So we'll do the same trick and go down and highlight everything up until the next pipe symbol. Run it again. And now if we look, you can see that it's read it in, but this time it is reassigned those column names. You can do the same thing here, and here we'll see, oh, here we'll see that it's done everything up to that point plus taken off the year column. We can do it again going through the next line and see that in this case it's reordered the rows. And now we can see how it's going to change that first column. So now everything's in lowercase. And this last step it'll add on the new column. 
And so we can see that here. So I think this is a really helpful technique as you're trying to figure out what's going on in your code or code that somebody else has shared with you. It's also really helpful when you're trying to debug some of these longer pipelines of code. My next tip would be that when you're writing in these R scripts that use piping, that you first write it without assigning it to an object. So in other words, I've shown down here everything but the gets arrow. Walk through that, make sure that's working like you want it to, and then at the end, you can add on the assignment. So we can take a look at what that might look like. We can go through here, and as you build up this code, you would do it without that assignment. And so you would try, you know, you might have written this first part and checked to make sure that that worked and then written the next line and checked that and so on. And then once you run it and you go down to your console and you see that it is what you want, then you can go back and add on in your script that assignment to Daily Show. And now when you run it, you'll end up with that new object. Finally, it can take a little while to type out that long piping character. And so there's a keyboard shortcut that will let you do it much more quickly. It's one that I use really often, uh, Command Shift and then M. And you might want to check on your system. It might be a little bit different. Again, in our studio, if you go into Tools and the keyboard shortcuts help, it will tell you what all the keyboard shortcuts are on your particular system. So you can look through that to find what it is for inserting this pipe operator. And it should be right down here. You can see that here, it's that one that I just gave in the slides. 